We're good. All right, guys, welcome back to uh, Poetry Talks with Mr. Harvey Miscellis. That's right. Uh, we are going to be jumping in to the very concrete steps of how to read a poem. That's right. So we talked about it last video in our introduction. Uh, there is a process that makes poetry both accessible and beautiful. Um, and we are going to walk you guys through that process. And so step one to reading a poem quite simply is. What does it say? What does the poem say? What the Why poem do we say? start with that? Yeah, we start with that because um, with poems and with people, sometimes what we like to do is jump to conclusions. We like to have reactions. But the first thing we have to do is we have to listen. We have to be willing to slow down, pay attention to individual words in their specific order, and make sure we understand what it is on the surface before we try to dig any deeper. Um, I found with even students in AP English 12 that the biggest mistakes um, happen when they haven't been careful enough about what the poem says. So it's where really, really important work is done. Love it. So guys, hear that. Do not try and jump to meaning right here. Yeah. All right. Just let me reiterate that. Don't worry about what the poem means. We're just trying to get what is he actually saying okay. in this first stanza. Yeah. And I think sometimes when when we hear like really good readers of poetry talk about poems, it feels like what they're doing is something magical. Yeah. Like they just got it. Right. Like they just get it. Like there's yeah. this magical moment of like, ah, the clouds open up and the angels descend and I know what the poem yeah. means. How it works. Right. And so then if we try to do that, we end up just making stuff up faking it, guessing, you know, all those kinds of things. And so what we want to do is really listen first. Love what it. does it actually say? So the way we're going to take this is uh, Miss Ellis is going to read stanza number one uh, out loud. Poetry is meant to be heard out loud yeah. uh, when a writer is putting it on paper. Uh, it's with the thought that this is taken in verbally. Yeah. Um, and so Miss Ellis is going to read it for us. We're just going to hear it, embrace it. And then what's going to happen is we're going to begin walking through, okay, what does it look like? What are some different tools, different strategies that we can begin to figure out what the poem says? We will do that together, modeling what you will do from here on out as a reader of poetry. That's right. So you've got the poem on the screen before you. I'm going to be reading the part there on the left. A couple of things to say. Go ahead and watch where my cursor is. So there are two different kind of lines in poems. There are lines that are end stopped. So if you notice, that's any... Uh, line that ends with a with a um, comma, with a period, a place where you would naturally kind of pause as you're reading. There are other lines that are enjammed. And that enjambment means that they wrap around, the meaning keeps going. That's a really important thing to pay attention to when you read out loud. Listen to the first three lines and, and I'll show you what I mean. So for example, if I read all of these lines like they're end stopped, it's gonna sound really weird. A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey and such a long journey. I don't understand yet what it says because I haven't paid attention to the punctuation. But listen, if I pay attention and read for the punctuation instead of the end of the line. A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey and such a long journey. Notice how different that is. It's so much yeah. easier to understand, right? Yeah. Suddenly makes sense. Okay. So guys, we, as you guys, as you're reading it, pretend that this is just a normal piece of text, right? So read for oh, yeah. punctuation, just like you normally would. I bet they did that sentence. with the Odyssey, didn't they? Yeah, you, yep. you have to, you know? Yep. And so that's a good, that's a rule of thumb for reading all poetry. That's right. Right, you don't stop at the end of the lines. It's not a limerick, <laughs> um, it's a poem. That's right. Okay, great. So I'm just gonna do stanza one. Or do, do you think we should read the whole thing? Or just stanza one? Let's do stanza one. Okay, I think we'll start with stanza one. Okay. The Journey of the Magi by T.S. Eliot. A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey. And such a long journey. The ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the camel's galled, sore-footed refractory lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces, and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Then the camel men cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women, and the night fires going out, and the lack of shelters, 
and the city is hostile and the town's unfriendly and the village is dirty and charging high prices. A hard time we had of it. At the end, we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears, saying that this was all fallen. Love it. That's good, isn't it? It's so good. Okay, so <laughs> clearly we have a story of some sort. Yeah. Right. Hey, um, what are some of the things that suggested to you that it was a story? Uh, the we. Okay. In the first line, a cold yeah. coming we had of it. Okay. I was thinking, okay, he's speaking as if the we represents somebody. Yeah. Right. So uh, who? The title. Right. The journey of the magi. Kind of put two and two together. Oh yeah. So and you thought, think you okay, got a the sense magi, of the magi? Um, you know, with the story of going to visit Jesus, and then I heard camels, and I thought maybe I'm on to something there. Okay. Um, so yeah, I had some thoughts there, and then speaking of specific events that happened. Okay. Right. They stopped at different villages. Yes. Uh, they wanted to go home. Right. Right. It was pretty clearly somebody experiencing something and yeah. telling about it. And you know, Mr. Harvey, I find that one of the things people miss a lot is just paying attention to the title. Yeah, like it's really easy <laughs> to skip, yeah. and those are really important yeah. things. Yeah, lots of Magi's information. on a journey. journey. I know it's pretty clear. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. So, uh, what is your take on sort of some tricks and tips to understanding what the poem says? What are some things the students should do? You know, before they say, "I don't understand it." Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, one thing is we did a great job. I thought of reading it one time, but like five times is a good way to go. Out loud to yourself, anything like that. And then one of the things I do that's really important is as you read, pay attention to the words that are unfamiliar. And this can be both a word that you don't know at all and the words that you think you kind of know what they mean. But you're not positive. But you're not positive. Yeah, yeah it's going to be really good to get a clear idea of that. So if we take a look at this first stanza, yeah. Mr. Harvey, what are some of the words that you might think, you know, I'm, I'm going to want to look that up. Yeah, uh, just off of your reading, yeah. um, the camel's gall. I have no idea. Not sure what gall means. No idea. I'm going to go to the bottom here and I'm going to keep a little list of yeah. some of our words. Yeah, and I'll, I'll pull up my computer and do some uh, dictionary research. Oh, I like it. Yeah. So gall. What in the world does gall? Gall definition. It is a English word meaning to make someone feel annoyed or to make sore by rubbing, okay. which would make sense because the next line, or excuse me, next word says sore footed. Okay. So, so the camels were sore and annoyed. Okay, so probably the second we would yeah. say. Interesting to kind of hold on to the to that first meeting too. Hey, yeah. there's a there's a story about T.S. Eliot that when he would teach, he was so concerned with getting exactly the right word that he would sometimes pause in the classroom for as long as five minutes to think what he said to think of exactly the right word. Gosh. Can you imagine, guys, yeah. if that was happening in class? That would be something. Yeah, watch out. also be hanging on his every word. Though, right, you know? right. I know, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, All right, so uh, good with gold, whatever. Gold, sore-footed, I feel like, sore is in, yeah, yeah, in the mm -hmm. word. Uh, refractory, I do right? not know what that means. That's a total, total new one. If you already know refractory, awesome. Yeah, you're killing if it. If not, you look it up. The camel's gold, sore-footed, refractory. Refractory means Stubborn or unmanageable, okay. resistant to a process. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. So the process of journey, yeah. they're resistant to it. They were so worked, tired, yeah. not up for it. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. my dog when I put him in the crate right. before I came here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay, lying down to melting snow, I feel good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, terraces. Terraces. I feel like I have a pretty good idea, but I'm not positive. So I'm going to look that one up just to yeah. play it safe. Good move, right? Uh, a level paved area or platform next to a building or a series of flat areas made on a slope used for cultivation. That's kind of what I thought of. So like the stepped. Okay. Uh, I guess it's either land or structure of some sort. Okay. Kind of like either like patios yeah, or like patios or those like steps that yes. go down and so forth, things like that. And they're yeah. talking about the summer palaces. That would make sense. Yeah. Pleasant flat spaces, nice places to be. The silken girls bringing sherbet. Ooh. Don't know what sherbet is. Again, I think I have an idea. It's like an ice cream of some sort. Sounds good. A frozen dessert made with fruit juice added to milk or cream, egg white, or gelatin. Ooh. So 
I'm gonna say ice cream. <laughs> fruit juice and cream. Yeah, yeah, so like a fruit ice cream. Summer ice cream. Summer ice cream. Sounds good. Uh, then the camel and cursing and gambling. Running away, wanting their liquor and women. I feel good with that. The city's hostile. 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 I know it had something to do with like unwelcoming, but let's see. Also means of or relating to an enemy. Oh. Uh, marked by showing unfriendly feelings. Yeah. So resisting. Oh, I like how you connected that with the cam with the camel yeah. earlier. Yeah, sure. Refractory, refractory right? yeah. and hostile are like a little bit enemy. similar in this unfriendly. area. Yeah. Um that's interesting because it connects both with the sense of the the journeyers wanting to move forward and meeting continued resistance. Yeah. Right? The camels are resisting, the, the this, people are resisting. The people are resisting. Yeah. I think that about covers it for the first stanza. I was wondering um, about snatches, snatches maybe. Snatches? Oh, that's good. Sleeping in snatches. I mean, it sounds like it could be like a, a sleeping location. bag. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. Sleeping in snatches. There's a lot here, but it sounds like just short moments. Yeah. It's kind of the general. Yeah. Right. So they're not getting a full night's yeah. sleep. They're Sleeping just like in. A little bit here, a little, little bit there. Naps. Yeah. Not the way we want to sleep. Not the way. No. Uh, yeah. I think that's about it. Okay. The one thing I've been wondering about yeah. was folly. Yeah. Are we all good on folly? Um, folly, folly, folly. Lack of good sense or foolishness. So the voices in their head saying, this is foolish. This is foolish. Okay. All right. So that's really helpful. Okay. So folks, those of you watching, notice what I've done. I haven't just thought, oh, I'll remember what that means. I've taken the time to actually jot down those definitions on the same page as the poem. So I have them to go back to. That's going to really help me in a minute. Because the next thing we're going to do is see if we can use our better understanding of the words to put the whole thing together. So the first thing we did was we read it out loud, paying attention to the lines and the punctuation. Uh, the second thing we did is we looked up unfamiliar words. And wrote them down. And wrote them down, got actual real definitions, even if we kind of knew. And then now we're gonna paraphrase. Perfect. We're gonna try to put it in our own words. So a summary is when you take this much text and you put it in this many words. And a paraphrase is when you take this much text and you have this much text, but it's your own words in the clearest and simplest. Form. Yeah, and so guys, a good way to uh, good way to do this is to go through it, you know, sentence by sentence mm -hmm. until you get to an end mark, right? So reading it like you would oh, yeah. uh, a normal, you know, piece of text. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reword it in my own phrasing. Miss Ellis is going to do the job of writing down the things I'm saying so that you guys can see it. Typically, what would happen is you would do both of these things, right? So you would be going through and with a pencil, a pen, or on a document, you'd be writing each sentence in your own paraphrase so that you can go through and you know exactly what T.S. Eliot is trying to say. Yeah. Or is saying here. Yeah. Or trying to understand. Yeah. Yeah. And we so, can use the words we've defined. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to do that first sentence. Uh, a cold coming we had of it. Just the worst time of the year for a journey and such a long journey. We usually uh, start sentences with subjects and verbs, don't we? Yeah, so I would say we had a cold and difficult journey for this time of year. Okay. Let's go with that. It was the worst time of year for a journey. And it was what? Uh, such a long, long journey. journey, yeah, yeah, good. I always want to put an exclamation point. Yeah. I'm putting an exclamation like point. Bold it. Right? <laughs> Long okay. journey. Uh, the ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. Okay. Uh, it was the very dead of winter. And the ways were deep. There's a whole verb missing, deep inserted. That's great. Yeah. And the weather was sharp. And we didn't we didn't redefine this, but the ways I can assume he's saying like the roads or the, oh, path, yeah. the path they took. Yeah, I'm gonna put that the roads yeah. and paths. Yeah, cool, good job. Um, next sentence: And the camels galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. Uh, the camels were galled. What did we say for galled? Which was uh, 
sore or just annoyed. Okay. So the camels were annoyed, sore-footed. Um, you could just put worn out yeah. for now and lying down in the snow. Cool. Got it. Next sentence. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces, and the silken girls bringing sherbet. You talked a little bit about regretted. Yeah, you know, interesting word. Right there. So it seems like what he's trying to say is there were times we missed the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces, and the girls bringing sherbet. Uh, okay. So they're missing where they just left. Yes, yeah, so, or there were times we regretted that we had left. Oh, that's good. Okay, that. there were times that we regretted that we had left the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces, and the silken girls. The girls were still in, dressed in silk. Yes. So, well, we'll say well dressed. Yeah. And the well dressed girls bringing, bringing do you want ice, to cream. Keep, you want to get ice cream. Summer ice That's cream. That's right, bringing summer ice cream. Yeah. It's a little more like it. Yeah, because who would want to leave that to be on this yeah. miserable journey? Not I. Um, next sentence. Then the camel man cursing and grumbling and running away, wanting their liquor and women. And the pause right there in that comma. Yeah. Uh, the camel men were cursing and grumbling and running away, wanting their liquor and women. So basically all I need to do there is add that word, add that verb. Uh, and the night fires were going out. And there was lack of shelter. Really, I'm just kind of adding the bunch of verbs here. So what? We wouldn't say lack of shelter, right? There, wasn't there, was, any, there was not any, any shelter available. There wasn't any yeah. shelter. You know what? It's not until you started paraphrasing that I noticed that so much of what's missing is it's that word. Verbs. Words, yeah, those word. verbs. Yeah. It makes me, it, and when I hear the difference of telling it now, the way we're paraphrasing, it sounds more like just saying exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Whereas like the way it is in the original text, it sounds a little bit more like someone remembering. Yeah. Right? Just like, like without all that memory. Oh yeah. yeah. Then, then this, then this, yeah. then the guy did, then the guy this, then the this, right? So it's, it has that whole sense of like, like maybe this poem is a long distant memory. Mm. Yeah, like he's just recalling a couple, some things. Yeah. Because he has snatches. Yeah. Uh, oh, memory. nice. See what I did there. <laughs> um, <laughs> where are we? What was the last line? Um, there were no shelter. There was no shelter. Cities the were cities hostile. were hostile and the towns were unfriendly and the villages were dirty and charging high prices. It's a pretty straightforward yeah. sentence. Villages, dirty, and charging high prices. Okay. And then he kind of ties back to the very first sentence here. Yeah. A hard true. time we had of it. So it was a difficult journey. Yeah, it was a difficult time. We had a hard time. Yeah. At the end, we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches. So, you know, by the end of the journey, we preferred okay. to travel all night, sleeping in snatches. Right. I like that clarification. Yeah. And then maybe instead of snatches, we put uh, taking cat naps or something like that, right? Okay, sleeping in yeah. bits and pieces. Sleeping in bits and pieces, I like that. With the voices singing in our ears. So maybe the voices doesn't clarify that. So maybe let's not get there yet. Yeah, that's good, let's right? So that sometimes what you do is in paraphrasing, you realize that some things just are yeah. ambiguous and you don't have an answer yet. And it's okay for you to end any one of these stages with some good questions. Yeah, and I think the really danger if we tried to dive in here would be that yeah. we go straight to meaning. Yeah, or we'd start making stuff up. Yeah. We and making stuff up, right. <laughs> we don't, we're not gonna do that. We don't know yet, so we're not sure. That's okay, throughout yeah. this whole process, some things you hold as questions and you say, I'm not sure yet, I'm gonna keep looking. So maybe underline that okay. section that's a good in yeah. your paraphrase. So with the voices singing in our ears, telling us that this is foolish. 
Oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it here with the voices. What do I want? Shift underline? No. Uh, no, command underline. Whew. But yeah, with the voices. Singing in our ears. Telling us oh, that this is foolish or that this yeah. was foolish. To keep the foolish. verb tense. I like it. Okay. Beautiful. Great. Yeah. So I like how we underlined that to Mark. Maybe yeah. I, I might even in my paraphrase almost put a little a little question, question mark. Asterisk. Yeah, to kind of remind myself. Like I'm not sure about that yet. And that's okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna make stuff up. So guys, quick, quick recap. We read it out loud. We paid attention to the title. Mm-hmm. We didn't try and jump to what the poem meant. Mm -hmm. uh, after we read it out loud, we did a little digging, found some words we did not know, wrote those down, either on the document or if you're doing it digitally, doing it yep. there with definitions. And then we went through sentence by sentence, paraphrased each uh, segment, you know, reworded it, switched it to so the wording, sounded maybe what we're more used to in conversational English. Um, and now on this document, we have the first stanza pretty clearly uh, understandable, at least on a basic level. Yeah, yeah. And it helps me understand what are the parts we know and what are some of the questions we still have. Yeah. We're not sure about the voices. We're not sure exactly where they came from. We're starting to get a sense of it. Beautiful. I think we're ready for next step. So step one was what does it say? What is step two, Miss Ellis? Step two is going to be what does it show? We're going to take a look at the images. Beautiful. That's for another video. Right now, Go do it. your turn is to take stanza two, read it out loud, listen to it, pay attention, look up unfamiliar words, jot them down, and then work to paraphrase it. And to do that with stanza three already, together they're about the same length as stanza one, so you're halfway there. Yeah. All right, friends, see you soon. Adios.